Hello, I'm Ren, and today we said we'd go over how to change levels with Blueprints and we'll create a simple transition using UMG. You'll see that just here as I go over to this door and it'll open this new level. So it fades to black, it fades from black back to transparent again. And once we pick up the key, the door goes invisible and we're able to overlap with the door and change levels. So, to get this started, we had to create a UMG element which is this new blackout. So we right click, create user interface, widget blueprint. In this widget blueprint on the left hand side, we've dragged a border into our viewport and we've reparented it to the top of the hierarchy. So we don't have a canvas panel, it's just the border. And we've made sure that it's filling the screen on the right hand side in the content options. On the left hand side, we've created two animations, one that fades from black and goes transparent and another one which fades from transparent and it goes to black. Now this is just using those keyframe options that we looked at last time with the health bar. In the graph of this widget blueprint we've got two custom events, one which plays the start level fade from black to transparent and one which ends the level and fades from transparent to black again. Now the places in which we call these two functions are our door and the start of our level when our HUD is created. In order to draw that blackout screen onto the HUD, we use the HUD blueprint, which we created last episode. And we've got a new function called create fade screen. Now that creates the blackout, it adds it to the player screen, which is different from add to viewport. So if we type add to, we've got two options. One which draws this widget straight to the player screen using the dimensions dictated inside the designer. So this one's set to fill the screen so it fills the screen and then we save a reference to that but we also call start level which plays the animation from black to transparent straight away as soon as the HUD starts. There's also a couple of things we've changed in the event graph for this HUD blueprint. So what we've got is when the game begins we create the fade screen and because when we create fade screen if I double click that at the end we start level and we play a one second animation. So back in the event graph, we have a delay for one second and then we draw the health bar. So we don't have the health bar and the fade screen on at the same time. The next thing that we do is when the key gets picked up and we overlap with the key and we destroy the actor and then we set the visibility of the door to false like we did in one of the last episodes. We also set the collision of the box on the door to overlap the player. If we look at the door quickly and we click on the box on the left hand side we'll see that it's set to block all, including the player. So what happens is, when the player touches this whilst the door is visible, the player just hits it and nothing happens. But as soon as we pick up the key, we set the collision response channel to the player object that we created as a collision preset in a previous episode, and we set that channel to overlap. So once we're overlapping with the player, as soon as this key's touched and the door's visibility has changed, back in the door on our box, if we click on the view on begin overlap, this is actually able to trigger now, whereas before, because it blocked the player, this would never happen. So what we do from there is we cast to the player to make sure that it is the player that's overlapping. It goes through to this next node where we get the HUD of the player controller and if we're able to cast to our first HUD, it means that we can get the references from it of various objects that we've saved, like the health bar and the blackout screen. And then we run this sequence. And a sequence runs a set of nodes one after the other, and you can keep adding pins to do more things. You can right click on each pin and remove those. And what we do is three things. We call the end level animation from the blackout screen, and we also set the player to ignore his movement input and this is done from the player controller. That's an option of the player controller is to ignore move input. So this means that the player can't move while we're changing level and the next thing to do is to remove the health bar from the screen because we don't want that to be visible whilst the fade out is happening. So we remove that. The last thing that we do is delay for one second whilst that animation is playing so once it's finished fading to black after one second, we open a new level and we can just get that by right clicking and typing open level. And what open level needs is a name, which we can type in ourselves here, level name. And what we've done is we've promoted that to a variable 
and we've made it editable on the left hand side using that little eye or on the right hand side using the editable tick box so now in our world where we've got our door if we were to click it on the right hand side we can see new level name as a variable and we can change the name of that and this name here needs to be relative to any of your levels which are these little icons here and I've got four levels I've got new map new map 2 and two test levels so I'm loading proc test which is this level here as soon as I overlap with this object but I'm only able to overlap with it once I've collected the key so if we play that quickly once we touch this key the door will go invisible and now we're able to overlap with it the screen fades to black we come back and the health bar pops back in so that's the basics covered for changing levels inside Unreal Engine and using blueprints and widgets to create fade-ins and fade-outs for those levels so one last thing we'll notice is that our health has changed here in this level and if we transition our level we'll notice our health is full again. So one of the things that we'll look at in the next episode is saving and loading variables for our players. So thanks very much guys and see you soon.